Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again. In this segment, we'll be speaking with Dr. Reed Merriman. He's joining us here as an attending physician in the lymphoma program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. He's going to talk about GenMab and AbbVie's preliminary data from its ongoing Phase 1-2 EPCOR trial. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Dr. Reed Merriman. Thanks for having me. Well, tell our uh, listeners a little bit about yourself. So I'm a medical oncologist at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. I'm a clinical investigator in the lymphoma group there with an interest in developing immune-based therapies for patients with indolent non-Hodgkin lymphomas and Hodgkin lymphoma. And I'm very excited to talk today about bispecific antibodies. EPCOR NHL2, what is this compound and how exactly does it work? So epcorinumab is a bispecific antibody uh, that targets CD3 on T cells and CD20 on B cells and also uh, CD20 positive uh, B cell lymphomas. So it basically brings T cells and malignant B cells in close proximity and induces T cell mediated killing of, of those lymphoma cells. Epcritimab has been tested across a number of different B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphomas, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, follicular lymphoma, mantle cell lymphoma, uh, CLL, and has shown promising results uh, across a number of different lymphoma subtypes. Um, And it was actually recently approved in the United States for treatment of relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma uh, among patients who've received uh, two or more prior lines of therapy. And there are a number of different studies across lymphoma subtypes that are that are looking at epcrinumab as a single agent or in combination that are very exciting. I heard you mention several conditions. Follicular lymphoma, I'm told that it's particularly challenging. What makes it so? I think uh, all lymphoma subtypes have their own challenges in terms of treatment. Mm-hmm. Uh, follicular lymphoma, I think, is challenging, uh, one, because it's a quite heterogeneous disease. There are some patients who uh, can be observed for years before they require treatment, and there are other patients who progress rapidly after initial therapy. Um, so, you know, the variety across the disease can make it challenging. And then one of the central challenges for treating follicular lymphoma is that it is an incurable disease, at least with our standard treatments. Um, so we'd really like to have biomarkers that can help us to decide how best to treat an individual patient, given the variety in terms of uh, clinical outcomes. And then ideally, we could develop treatments uh, that could be cured of at least for a subset of patients. Concerning this year's European Hematology Association's annual meeting, tell us about some of the results that were presented at this meeting. Sure. So at uh, the EHA this year and ASCO as well, uh, we heard updated results from the trial that tested R-squared plus epcritimab among patients with relapsed or refractory follicular lymphoma. So each of those three drugs, rituximab, lenalidomide, and epcritimab, has a different mode of action. And it was hypothesized that the immunomodulatory effects of lenalidomide might enhance the activity of epcritimab. So in this trial, patients uh, received 12 cycles of R-squared using standard dosing, and two different epcritimab dosing strategies were tested with more frequent dosing in ARM2A and less frequent dosing in ARM2B. So in total, there were about 110 patients who were, who were treated on this trial. Uh, they'd received a median of one prior line of treatment, and there were many high-risk patients in this cohort, including about 60% with stage 4 disease, about 40% with progression of disease within 24 months of initial therapy, or POD24, a group of patients we know to have uh, inferior outcomes with subsequent treatments, and then about 60% of patients with a high-risk flippy score. Uh, so in terms of toxicity, the, the adverse event profile looks similar to prior studies with epcrinumab. Uh, The most common adverse events were infections, neutropenia, and cytokine release syndrome. CRS, which is uh, an adverse event of of particular interest, uh, occurred in about 50% of patients in this trial, with almost all cases being low-grade. I think there were two patients who had grade 3 CRS. CRS occurred over a predictable timeline, with almost all CRS occurring within the first cycle of treatment, And most cases of CRS occurring on the cycle one day 15, which is the first day that patients receive a full dose of epcritimab. 
In terms of activity, uh, high response rates we're seeing, the overall response rate was 98% and the complete response rate was 87%, both of which are quite high uh, in this disease setting. And notably, uh, high response rates were seen across all patient subgroups, including those with high-risk features, including POD24 and high-risk FLPI scores. So um, with this you know, extended follow-up uh, in the data that was presented this summer, there was about a year of follow-up for the typical patient, and the one-year progression-free survival was about 80%, and the one-year duration of complete response was about 90%. So certainly we need longer follow-up um, but it seems like responses are durable, and importantly, again, uh, durable responses were seen across different patient subgroups, including high-risk subgroups like POD24. So I, I think this data is very, very encouraging. Um, it suggests that this combination is highly active and has a manageable safety profile. And based on this encouraging data, there's an ongoing phase three trial that's comparing R squared to R squared plus epigrotumab among patients with relapsed or refractory follicular lymphoma. Expound on the, the significance of this data, especially for FL patients. If they give us information where we can learn more. Sure. So um, I think this data specifically is very encouraging for relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma patients. Oftentimes, F, you know, FL patients have a lot of options uh, after first-line treatment. But we do worry about higher risk patients, particularly POD24 patients, because they tend to do poorly with our standard treatment options. So I think it's great to have another potential uh, treatment option for those patients. And then more broadly, I think this trial adds to a number of studies uh, testing CD3, CD20 by specific antibodies that suggest that uh, these drugs will play an important role in treatment for follicular lymphoma. And there are trials looking at uh, incorporation of bispecific antibodies at every stage of treatment. So I think it's still an open question of where in the treatment algorithm it's best to use these drugs. Um, but, but we're very excited to see over the next few years uh, data from those trials uh, that I think will, will really have a positive impact for patients with follicular lymphoma. Um, so this the trial that I talked about today was supported by GenMab and AbbVie. Um, so if you want more information specifically about this trial, you can look at the websites for those companies, GenMab.com or AbbVie.com. Reed, I appreciate your time this morning. I'm hoping that you'll come back as these uh, trials progress. Uh, I'd be happy to come back to talk more. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Reed Merriman. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Also at Anchor Spotify and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com Health Professional Radio.